Hi, this is Nick from Stratospheric Sound, and today we're going to be checking out Prism Retro Pop Drums by Ava Music Group. This is a very focused, compact library of heavily processed drums that are ready to go straight out of the box. They'll cut through a mix with instant punch, power, precision and what have you, and the library's simplistic but intuitive user interface means you won't get lost tweaking a bunch of settings for hours. Instead, you'll just open it up and instantly get laying down some fat, hard-hitting percussion perfect for genres such as pop or synthwave. In this video, I'll be going through a number of the various presets and allowing you to hear them raw, as well as applying some to a couple of tracks and seeing how they hold up. So without further ado, let's have a listen to the sound of Prism Retro Pop Drums. Now I just want to start by talking about the interface itself and the sort of usability of the patch in contact. It, it does work within the free contact player, which is good. The previous um, prism which was modern pop didn't you had to have the full contact to contact to play that so now prism retro pop does work in the free contact player so that's a bonus um once you've loaded the patch this is what you get it's this lovely sort of 80s inspired synth wave retro wave outrun whatever you want to sort of call it graphic which i really like um it's very clean it's very simple but the workings of the patch are effectively this you have five keys that play a sample you have a kick, a snare, clap, and open and closed hi-hats. That's it. You have no crashes, no rides, no toms, no other parts of the drum kit. And that's because this library, like I said at the start, it's a very focused, compact library. Um, you don't want to get bogged down with all sorts of different drum sounds. This is effectively to get really tight, punchy drums that cut straight through a mix, um, often just sort of a 4-4 four, four beat. Um, to give you, you that real that real backbone of your song, so like this, for example. Something like that. Very simple. No frills, no bells and whistles. Now, you might miss your crashes and things like that, so you may have to find those elsewhere. But when you do actually purchase this, they do also send you a folder of sort of bonus sounds, which includes crashes, toms, and the like, but they're individual wave um, files. So they don't work within this um, library itself. And unless you want to start messing around with lots of different individual audio files for sort of each tom and build a sequence out of it and so on and so forth, um, you'll probably not use this collection of sounds for that. You're probably going to use Prism Retro Pop for that 4-4 steady or maybe a bit of a swing to it, but they're effectively quite simple but powerful punchy drum beats. You also receive a selection of 52 individual MIDI loops, which you can just put into your door, select your kit, and away you go, you've got a beat. And I'll, um, I'll show you a bit more of those in a little bit when I go through the presets. So just in terms of the UI itself, you have this triangle in the middle. Um, this is the same as Prism Modern Pop, if, if, if you know anything about that. Um, and these circle of numbers around. So what is it? Well, effectively, each um, circle represents a different sample. So this section here is the kick. So you have 10 different kick samples. Here, open and closed hi-hats. You have 10 of those. And then the same with the snare and the claps. And as you spin this triangle around, it will select from 10 presets, because there's 10 of them, um, with each with a kick and a snare and a clap and a hi-hat that have been carefully sort of curated and, uh, curated and chosen to work together for sort of a, a specific effect. So if we start with the sort of the default, which is what I've just played, and you think, mm, yes, nice, but I don't like it. Let's see what the next one is. You've suddenly got a very different kick, a lot more tone to it, a lot more uh, low end rumble to it, and uh, a bit more sort of punch to the snare itself. Go a bit further. You'll have to excuse my, uh, my playing at times, my finger drumming isn't always up to scratch. Um, so effectively that's what you've got, and every time you turn this triangle you get another um, collection of, of kick, snare, clap and so on and so forth. It's very simple, as I say. So you effectively choose one that, that works on your mix, you play it, bang, great, jobs are gone, you've got your drums sorted. Um, on top of all of that, so you have 10 effective 
presets straight away, but then you have your individual snapshots within contact. Now, what these do, as opposed to doing anything drastic, like adding loads of different new sounds, as far as I understand, they are the same samples as these original 10. However, the parameters at the edge of each section, so these are the, these are the parameters for the kick and the hi-hat and the clap and the snare here, um, those are adjusted accordingly to give it a certain sound. So what these effectively do, like I say, is they adjust the reverb, the EQ, the transient master and volume within the plugin itself, within the instrument itself, to slightly change and effectively give you a lot more presets to choose from. You can manually do that. So let's just go with the bog standard one again. So you do have your volume for the kick. You have the volume for each individual section. So let's just focus on the kick. So you've got your volume. Self-explanatory, your transient master to, to focus on how loud you want your transient and how sort of upfront you want it. Your EQ, which will give you a low end boost if you pull it to the left. And a high end boost if you put it to the right. Or a low end cut, if you will. And then your reverb. And then it's the same for the snare and the hi-hats and so on and so forth. And then you turn it around and you go again. These are very rudimentary sort of parameters, obviously. It gives you a little bit of control, but like the reverb especially, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, you can't control the room, you can't control the, the length or anything really of the reverb. You can't really do much with it. It's a predetermined reverb for the sample. Um, so it might work depending on, on how much you want to fiddle with it. Um, but if you really do want to add your own reverb, I'd probably do it externally afterwards outside of this plugin and just let the um, Ava's preset reverb settings on each individual um, snapshot and preset do, do be enough for you and then you just tweak it outside of that. That is personally what I would recommend. So yeah, so effectively, that's what you've got. That's the interface. Um, there's a whole collection of presets here, and then these ones that additionally change the parameters to give you even more. So what I'm going to do now is show you a number of the presets available straight out of the box. And to do this, I will be using um, a number of the MIDI loops that I mentioned earlier that come with Prism, um, and just sort of changing the sound, changing the preset as the um, system runs through the different MIDI loops. So here we go.
So I've loaded an old project for a song of mine called Neon Vision, which was originally released um, two years ago. It's on YouTube and uh, on my SoundCloud if you're interested. And it's sort of an 80s synth wavy rock track. Um, the drums were originally programmed using Easy Drummer 2. And I thought, you know, they did a decent enough job, to be fair. So what I'm going to do here is I've removed the drums and I'm going to play them with live with um, a preset from Prism Retropop. And we're just going to see sort of how well it fits, how well it sort of cuts through the mix um, and how much it might be missing things like the crashes and stuff, because there definitely are fills with crashes and things in the original one. I'm just going to play a little bit of the original one so you've got something to compare it to, and then I'll have a bash at playing it live with Prism. I'm going to replace those drums with my own from Prism Retropop, and I'm going to um, try and play it live as best I can, and we'll just sort of see how it sounds. Like I say, this isn't a mixed, fully mixed project or anything like that, but just for sort of uh, an idea, we're going to see how well completely unprocessed sounds cut through this mix. So there you go. It's it's good. Obviously, I've I've played that, not really sort of thinking too much about it or uh, where it's going. And you do sometimes feel like you might be missing things like crashes and whatnot for the sort of accenting points. But generally, you get some really cool sounds. Um, what I will do now, I will just play um, another piece that I've just made um, with some Prism Retro Pop drums already sat in it and just sort of see how they sound. It's a similar kind of thing, but just against slightly more... Uh, synth focused track um, whereas there's quite a few guitars in Neon Vision so we'll just have a listen to that and then uh, I'll give you my final, final thoughts <laughs> tell they're pretty badass drums to be fair and they are 
very good at what they do. So if you sort of sat there thinking, oh, should I get them, should I not, should I get the sort of drum library? They are perfect for very processed, sort of ready drums, uh, ready to go drums. And they are truly ready to go. I know a lot of products say that, uh, mix ready and all the rest of it, but these do really cut through because they've got the, the design, they're EQ'd to really punch through and um, because they, they, they can, because they've got that pop sort of sound to them. Um, they are truly ready to go out the box. You just find the sound you want, you, you lay down your line. The, the only thing that I do wish that they could incorporate would be a full kit. I know that would kind of be taken away from it, um, but even just the option to have some toms and some crashes and some rides in there. Exactly the same sort of style, primarily focused around kicks and, and snares and what have you, but just the ability to add in a few of those flourishes should you wish. And hopefully one day they will add those kind of things into a future library or um, you never know, even update this one, but it'll probably be something for the future. However, generally speaking, if you want a really tight, focused, compact and small library, I'm sure this was only around 200 and something meg, I could be wrong about that, but it's very small, but it's very focused and it's very good at what it does. Definitely check it out. There'll be a link in the description below this video. Um, in terms of pricing currently, because it's just been released, it's pricing at around 86 US dollars and it's discounted down, this is, 66 pounds in the uk or 79 euros so it's really worth checking out they are some fantastic sounds so so playable and they just sound cool they just sound great and hard hitting and it doesn't just have to be synth wave or anything like that. it works in anything these just happen to be the sort of tracks that i have to show them to today so yeah um i highly recommend these for the price that they are for the sort of sound quality and for the sort of usability that you get for them um for a lot of you out there i think these will be a good buy um, so yeah, thanks for watching as always and hopefully soon I'll be getting some new music onto the channel and uh, some more of these sound of videos as well. But until then, that's Nick out. Thank you very much. See you later.